He is known for his contributions to rationalist philosophy and natural sciences. He is recognized for his teachings in physics, astronomy, and mathematics at the University of Königsberg. He was a significant influence on Immanuel Kant and Johann George Hamann. His name is Martin Knudsen. In the quaint city of Königsberg, in the year 1713, a young Martin Knudsen took his first breath, unaware of the immense impact he would have on the world of philosophy. Blessed with a thirst for knowledge, Knudsen embarked on a remarkable journey of intellectual exploration. He pursued his studies at the renowned University of Königsberg, immersing himself in philosophy, mathematics, and physics. In 1733, he obtained his M.A. degree with his thought-provoking dissertation on the impossibility of the eternal world, titled Dissertatio Metaphysica de Eternitate Mundi Impossibili. Knudsen's brilliance did not go unnoticed, and in 1735, he was appointed as a professor extraordinary of logic and metaphysics at his alma mater. Guided by the teachings of Christian Wolff, a prominent rationalist thinker, Knudsen delved into various scientific disciplines, teaching physics, astronomy, mathematics, and philosophy. It was during this time that he found himself captivated by the theories of Isaac Newton, urging him to question the pre-established harmony proposed by his predecessors, Leibniz and Wolff. Instead, he championed the idea of mechanical causality in the movement of physical objects. Little did Knudsen know that his insights would later play a pivotal role in shaping the works of Immanuel Kant, one of his Königsberg University students, who sought to reconcile the autonomy of the spiritual with the reality of the mechanical in his groundbreaking, Critique of Judgment. As time weaved its tapestry of knowledge, Knudsen left an indelible mark on the minds of his students. Immanuel Kant and Johann George Hamann, both influenced by Knudsen's thought-provoking lessons, would go on to become influential philosophical figures themselves. However, like all great minds, Knudsen's journey came to an end in 1751, as he departed from this world in his beloved city of Königsberg, leaving behind a legacy that would continue to inspire generations to question, explore, and seek truth in the realms of philosophy and science. In the small town of Königsberg, a young extraordinary professor named Martin Knudsen had a profound impact on a student named Immanuel Kant. Knudsen, known for his strong personality, planted the seed of philosophy and science in Kant's mind during their time together at the University of Königsberg. The bond between Knudsen and Kant grew stronger, as they delved into discussions on faith and explored various fields of study. Knudsen's extensive private library on natural sciences became a valuable resource for Kant's writing, particularly for his first treatise titled, Thoughts on the True Estimation of Vital Forces. This mathematical text was greatly influenced by the knowledge Knudsen had amassed in his library. It was through Knudsen that Kant was introduced to the scientific literature of the time, including the works of the renowned Isaac Newton. Newton's ideas had a powerful impact on Kant's own philosophical development, thanks to Knudsen's guidance. However, it is worth noting that Knudsen did not consider Kant to be one of his best students and favored others like Friedrich Johann Buck and Johann Friedrich Weidenkampf. Knudsen, ten years Kant senior, reached professorship at the young age of 21. Despite his advanced knowledge, Knudsen faced external pressures that prevented him from securing an ordinary professorship. Like his disciple Kant, Knudsen led a solitary life dedicated to study, rarely venturing far from his hometown. Tragically, Knudsen's life was cut short at the age of 37 due to his impetuousness and academic overexertion. Known for his bad temper and isolation, he left behind a remarkable reputation and admiration from his students, including Kant. Alongside the latest scientific advancements and discoveries, Knudsen also introduced Kant to British empiricism, further shaping his philosophical worldview. After Knudsen's death, his widow remarried Johann Daniel Funk, a close friend of Kant's and a lawyer. Funk's intriguing personality and unconventional lifestyle made him a kindred spirit for Kant, leading to a close friendship between the two. Funk's lectures on jurisprudence were highly regarded, and despite his unconventional ways, he was considered the best among the professors. The profound influence of Martin Knudsen on Kant's philosophy cannot be underestimated. From the introduction to scientific literature and the works of Newton, to the exploration of empiricism, Knudsen's guidance laid the foundation for Kant's future contributions to philosophy. The bond between teacher and student, although not without its complexities, played a crucial role in shaping Kant's intellectual journey. Martin Knudsen, a philosopher known for his attempt to strike a balance between pietist Lutheranism and Christian Wolff's dogmatic philosophy, had a unique perspective on the relationship between theology and philosophy. While many saw philosophy as merely a precursor to theology, Knudsen believed that it had its own set of principles and could even provide rational proof for religious truths. In his groundbreaking work titled, Philosophical Proof of the Truth of the Christian Religion, Knudsen challenged the prevailing notions and demonstrated the deep connection between philosophy and religion. 
His ideas not only shaped the intellectual landscape of 18th century Prussia but also influenced the thinking of his famous student, Immanuel Kant. Knudsen's philosophical standpoint was notably anti-Leibnizian, rejecting theories such as pre-established harmony and occasionalism. He advocated for the theory of physical influx, inspired by Locke and corpuscularism, as the most reasonable explanation for the workings of the natural world. Unlike Leibniz's theory, which he found theologically objectionable, Knudsen believed that physical influx aligned better with his understanding of divine providence and natural phenomena. His philosophical disagreements also extended to discussions on the concept of living force, dead pressure, and momentum, where he found himself aligned more closely with British philosophers like Newton. In 1744, Knudsen's reputation soared when he accurately predicted the reappearance of a comet based on Newton's theories. His book titled, Rational Thoughts on the Comets, brought him recognition as a great astronomer and drew parallels between him and renowned philosophers such as Newton, Descartes, Leibniz, Locke, and Boyle. However, Knudsen's prediction faced scrutiny from mathematician Leonard Euler, who demonstrated that the comet that appeared in 1744 was not the same as the one observed in 1698. This criticism, while valid, did not diminish Knudsen's significance in the eyes of his students and the people of Königsberg, who continued to revere him. Knudsen's work on comets was not just a scientific endeavor, it was driven by theological concerns as well. He wrote in response to the fear-inducing claims made by Johann Hain, who believed comets to be omens of doom. Drawing on Newton's principles, Knudsen dismissed Hain's views and labeled him an obscurantist. The ensuing controversy included accusations of plagiarism and disputes over the identity of the comets. Despite these criticisms, Knudsen's students remained loyal, seeing him as a hero who challenged prevailing beliefs and bridged the gap between science and theology. Martin Knudsen's legacy, though not without limitations, lies in his recognition of the autonomous nature of philosophy and its ability to provide rational proof for religious truths. His innovative thinking on the relationship between theology and philosophy influenced his famous student Immanuel Kant and left a lasting impact on the intellectual landscape of his time. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.